people and I think they use their hair, I guess like a status quo. When your hair is on fleek, typically, you know, you have it going on and people think that way. When your hair is not so sleek, people tend to think just the opposite. I think that that's where uh, the push of image and identity came from. Um, when the older girls became older, you know, their whole um, identity is being wrapped around graduating from school and um, assimilating or blending into society. And society is telling our girls that the hair has to be straight and long or just not curly. And the only way we can achieve that is either we press and curl it or we perm it. I can recall going to school with girls that had no edges. Their hair was all broken out and, and just, just from too tight ponytail clips or having chemical relaxers placed in their hair that took out the edges or uh, scars on their forehead from too much chemical being placed in it to the point where the hair was just so fine and so damaged that it almost comes down to there was no other choice than to put braids or put a weave on or put a wig on. So we are, we are, our, our, our hair is taking a big toll. My youngest daughter had a thicker, naturally coiled hair. Beautiful hair, puffy, big, almost untainable. It was a nightmare. Um, she was tender-headed. She hated having her hair combed. Uh, she didn't like to sit still. Um, because it's naturally coiled, it wasn't easy to get the part straight um, because she was young and I thought, why does her hair need to be done anyway? She's not going to a job, She's not. she wasn't even going to school at the time. Why do I even have to torture her this way? Um, and again, it's because we're taught that um, our kids' hair have to be combed. It have to be, every hair has to be in place, whether it's coiled and pulled back into a ponytail and it's a puff puff at the end, you still have to get a comb through it. Black women get their hair done for everybody, to be honest, um, with themselves on the top of the list because everybody likes to look good. But you are doing your hair for your man. You are doing your hair for your friends. You are doing your hair for your job. You're doing your hair for your associates, your close friends. You're in a room full of people, mostly Caucasian, one or two Black or African American. You walk into an interview and you look around and you look at everybody and you see the different hairstyles and then you see how your hairstyle is different and you see how people look at you differently. They're asking you questions but they're looking at your hair. It's the same as if someone had something on their face and um, someone's talking to you and they, they're staring at your face. Unfortunately, um, the other, race, other races don't have our hair. They don't have what we have. Um, their hair don't grow to the to the sun. Ours does. And so when when we're looked at, so many facets of of things, categories, subjects, fall on us in perception from from other people. Everybody wants to be us, but nobody wants to be us. It's, it's really weird. They want our lips. They want our color, our skin color, and they want our hair. But they don't really want us to express it because nobody can wear our hair like we can wear our hair. Our hair is the, it, it's just so amazing how many textures is within our community. A lot of other ethnicities like to come to us because since we can do our own hair, which is known in the world as being, I don't want to say the roughest hair, but that's how they look at us, that the fact that we can do our own hair, we can do anything. They like the fact that I know what to do for each different strand that comes into my shop. And they definitely love our culture, so they definitely want to be, they love the, the entertainment, they love the, the fact that we can do anything with their hair. And typically that does happen in a black shop, I think more so. We are more family oriented, we are more uh, prone to connecting with each other more. Uh, you know, we, we everybody cousin, we love everybody. It's, it's definitely a culture. It's definitely a culture and it's definitely a movement. I love when people come here. I think the black hair experience is powerful because it encompasses so many things about us as a people, us as a culturally, and, and, and it had, that in itself has so many dimensions to it. I just think black hair is powerful and it's awesome and um, it's unique above everything. 
um, it's one of the most unique things that we have about ourselves, not to mention our skin and how it varies, our hair texture varies. I think it's powerful, powerful, powerful.